Okay, let's talk pulse and blood pressure. So what is your heart rate? Well, your heart rate is the number of times your heart beats per minute. And just again, as I reiterate, because we will be doing a dissection, these flappy looking things, those are the atria. So normal heart rate, remember, 60 to 100 beats per minute. Heart rate does change with age and fitness. So a fetal heart rate, a newborn heart rate is much faster. And as we age, our heart rate kind of slows down. So an average adult has a heart rate between 60 and 100. If you are more fit, your heart is more effective, it's more efficient. So an athlete actually has a lower heart rate. What increases heart rate? Well, your sympathetic nervous system, your fight or flight, also exercise, right? So sympathetic nervous system increases your heart rate, like when you're nervous, like when you're scared. What decreases your heart rate? Well, the opposite nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system, that's rest and digest, and also sleep. So parasympathetic is like a calm down. So what are some factors that do affect heart rate? Well, we talked about age, we talked about fitness level. So age, remember newborns, very fast heart rate. Fitness level, athletes are gonna have a lower heart rate. Um, hormones in the nervous system, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. So sympathetic increases, parasympathetic decreases, but they're doing that through the release of hormones, okay? Stress, medications, diet, medical conditions, all kinds of things can affect your heart rate. So how can we measure heart rate? Well, we could use a stethoscope. Um, we can use a device um, on, uh, that's put on your finger, which measures your, the oxygenation in your blood, but also your pulse. Um, it could also be done um, on the stethoscope when you're doing blood pressure. So sometimes um, it can be done that way. What is pulse? Well, pulse is the rhythmic dilation of an artery caused by the beating of the heart. So the ventricles are contracting rhythmically. And as they contract rhythmically, the arteries dilate rhythmically. So the heart rate is actually the rate at which the heart itself is contracting and relaxing. So that involves cardiac muscle. The pulse rate is how that heart contraction is reflected in the arteries, okay? So that's the difference between heartbeat or heart rate and pulse, okay? So where do we measure pulse? Well, a whole lot of places we can actually do it. But where do doctors and nurses most commonly evaluate your pulse? It's going to be in your radial artery. All right. Why? Well, first, it's less invasive and it's easier to maintain contact with the wrist for a long enough time. So radius. So we need to go thumb side of your wrist. OK. So thumb side and then right about here press down and then you will feel it. What you wanna remember, do not use your thumb. Your thumb has an arterial pulse in it that will confuse um, you counting. So we're gonna to need to be on thumb side. It helps sometimes if you like flex your wrist a little bit, you can feel the pulse a little bit better. So where on the other hand, would you measure the pulse in an unconscious person? Well, we'd use the carotid artery. Um, and why? Well, in your neck, it's the strongest pulse point. It's closest to the heart in terms of where we can easily feel a pulse. And it is a little bit more aggressive. Like if you're at the doctor's office, you kind of want a doctor grabbing at your neck. But if you're unconscious and we're talking about a life or death situation, then it would be appropriate. OK, so you're going to feel up here your um, carotid artery. So remember these pulse points. Carotid artery, you can feel it up here. Carotid artery. Radial artery, remember, thumb side. Flex your wrist a little bit, it'll help you feel it. 
And then the brachial artery, that's the one that's used to measure your blood pressure. So let's try. So we're going to copy this table in your notebook. Um, and we're going to use our radial pulse. Okay, so we're going to get on the radius side, the thumb side of our wrist, use two fingers and feel the pulse. Okay, we're going to count for 20 seconds, and but we want our beats per minute, so then we are going to multiply by three. But I'll talk you through it. Okay, so we're going to record our pulse. Remember that we're going to have to multiply by three because we're only counting for 20 seconds. And then we're going to calculate our average pulse. Okay. So now we're going to look at class data. So we're going to collect uh, that data. I'm just going to add um, a number into the chart. So now we're going to do 30 seconds of mild exercise. So we're just going to kind of walk in place. Okay, nothing dramatic. And record our pulse again. And then what happened to your pulse rate? So we're going to do this. It increased. It stayed the same. It decreased compared to your average pulse when at rest. All right now we're going to do 30 seconds of moderate exercise. So you have a choice. You can either do 30 seconds of jumping jacks or we're going to actively jog in place. And then we're going to check our pulse again. So what happened to your pulse rate this time? Did it increase? Did it decrease? Did it stay the same when compared to your resting heart rate again? So what do you notice about pulse? Do we notice anything? So what's blood pressure? So when the heart pumps, when those ventricles contract, the blood puts pressure on the walls of the artery, that's blood pressure. So it's the pressure of circulating blood against the walls of the blood vessels, okay? And it's in relation to that pumping of the heart. Normal blood pressure is 120 over 80, systolic and diastolic. Systolic during ventricle contraction, diastolic during uh, ventricle relaxation. So blood pressure again, systolic during contraction of the ventricles, diastolic during relaxation. So blood pressure is what's felt in the arteries due to that contraction and relaxation of the heart. How do we measure blood pressure? Ready? We use a sphig mammometer. A sphig mammometer. A sphig mammometer. A sphig mammometer. A blood pressure cuff. So hypertension, hyper, high blood pressure. So those arteries are experiencing too much pressure. So what are some urgent symptoms you might have that indicate hypertension? You might have heart palpitations, anxiety, a bloody nose, you might be short of breath, nauseous, lightheaded, headache. And because the heart is pumping harder, blood may not actually be flowing easily through those. Hypotension, on the other hand, is low blood pressure. So you might be nauseous or dizzy. You might actually faint or be tired. Your vision may be weak and blurry because, again, not enough blood flow coming to your eyes. Sleepy, confused, uh, worst case, obviously, coma and death. Vasodilation, remember, that's the dilation or the widening of blood vessels. So it decreases blood pressure. So if you are hypertensive, your blood pressure is high, your body will respond by dilating your blood vessels to try to alleviate that. What are some things that can cause vasodilation? Warm temperatures, exercise, medication, obviously, uh, spicy foods, and alcohol. Vasoconstriction, on the other hand, is constricting or narrowing the blood vessels. It increases the blood pressure. So if you are hypotensive, that's how your body will try to respond to increase your blood pressure back up. Um, but it's also due to cold temperatures, medications, fluid loss. So from a wound, from bleeding, from burns, from vomiting, from diarrhea, too much fluid loss, your blood vessels will constrict to try to elevate your blood pressure again. In class, we are going to practice with a blue kit. And that's it. That's pulse and blood pressure. I hope you learned something new.